Greetings to my fellow Dova Keen of Tamriel. While some of you may know me from my videos about ENB for Fallout 4, we are here today with the first video in my new series about ENB for Skyrim Special Edition. This video provides a basic overview of ENB 0.310, as well as detailed installation instructions, which should also apply to future versions of ENB as well. While ENB for Skyrim Special Edition is still in its infancy, it already includes several useful features and effects, and I will cover each of these in detail in future videos. Okay, let's get started. As mentioned earlier, we will be installing ENB for Skyrim Special Edition, though the general process is the same for all ENB releases. First, you'll want to visit the enbdev.com website, and then click on the News link towards the bottom of the page. Here we find news about recent ENB updates, including the release of ENB 0.310 as seen here. Next, you will want to click on the download link from the main menu at the top of the page. From here, scroll down to the bottom of this page and click on the link for TES Skyrim SE. Okay, we're almost there folks. Now on this page, click the link for V0.310 or the link for the most recent release available if you're watching this video in the future. And finally here we find the download link itself, a small arrow at the bottom of this page. Just click the arrow and download the archive to a location on your computer you are familiar with. I already did this earlier, so here I am overwriting my previous files. Now, navigate to the downloaded file in Windows Explorer and extract the zip archive. Again, I have already done this earlier. Now, navigate to the Extracted folder and find the Wrapper Version folder within. From this folder, you will want to copy all of the files except the two text files, which are not required. Now, we navigate to our Skyrim SE game folder, which can be accessed easily through the Steam Properties window for the game. Just select the Local Files tab, and then click Browse Local Files. In the directory that opens, we will paste the ENB files we have copied to our clipboard. Again, I did this earlier, hence the overwrite. When installed correctly, both the ENB series folder and the loose files should be in the same directory as the Skyrim SE executable files. And congratulations, installation is complete. Now before we jump into the game, a quick note on updating ENB. In general, when updating, you only need to replace the d3d11.dll file to upgrade to a newer version of ENB. Though, you can always look at the date modified value for the files in the archive to see which ones are new since the last version. Now, the enbseries.ini file contains all of your custom settings for ENB, so you generally don't want to overwrite this file when updating. If an ENB update includes new parameters for this file, these will be automatically added to your existing enbseries.ini file when you boot up the game with the new version. Or, otherwise, you can copy any new parameters from the new enbseries.ini file into your own file before booting up. The enblocal.ini file is similar in nature, though in this early version of ENB, the file contains only a few customizable settings. And in general, you will also not want to update any of the files from within the ENB series folder, as these contain many of the effects settings which can be customized from within the game. Okay, we have now completed installation of ENB 0.310, so let's go ahead and boot up the game. As the game starts, notice the version message that appears at the top left, ENB Series 0.310 Beta. This indicates that the mod was installed correctly. Now, from right here on the Start menu, we can hit Shift-Enter on the keyboard to open ENB's in-game menu, again confirming that the mod is in fact working. Okay, so let's jump into the game and see how it looks. Fortunately, load times are not yet an issue with this early version of ENB. And... Huh? What? Why does everything look veiled in a shroud of gray? When we toggle ENB off with Shift F12, everything looks great. What gives? Well, this is actually because ENB's default post-processing is not configured to look good by default. However, I can give you three simple tweaks to make this scene look right. 
All you need to do here in the ENB Effect.Effects panel is to set Gamma, Brightness, and Contrast all to a value of 1.4. And now when we toggle ENB on and off, things look more like we would expect. However, there is still an issue in that these same settings do not look right at nighttime or in interiors. And since the default post-processing file does not include separate settings for days, nights, and interiors, there is no configuration of settings that works well for all three. You can see that with these settings, interiors appear much too dark and night scenes much too bright. So, what is to be done? Well, you have a couple options. The first option is to enable Original Post Processing and Original Bloom in the Effects section as shown here. Now, when you toggle ENB on and off, there is virtually no visible change. Then, what's the point of even using ENB, you ask? Well, this approach still allows you to enjoy some ENB effects, like depth of field, for example. And the second option is to use an alternate ENB post processing file, like those offered in the Cinematic Film Looks mod by Trey M and EDCVBNM, which provides a number of pre configured options based on real world film styles. I am also creating my own custom post processing file for everyday use, which I will share with you all once ready. Anyway, let's jump back into the game. Let's take a look at some of the features and options available in ENB 0.310. As always, we open the ENB menu by hitting Shift Enter. Since I play Skyrim with a gamepad, I can move my mouse freely without affecting the game. However, if you play with mouse and keyboard, moving your mouse with the ENB menu open will cause the game camera to move around like usual. To deal with this, you can open the console with the tilde key, thus freeing your mouse from camera movement. And you can also use the TM console command to hide the HUD and console if you want to get a better look. So, let's take a look at the options in the effect section of the ENB series.ini menu. The first four options are disabled by default, which should be fine for most users, unless you would like to use the original post processing and bloom options as discussed earlier. Dithering is a useful technique to handle color banding artifacts when present, though I don't think this feature is yet functional or at least it seems to have no impact on the game image. Moving along, we have Adaptation, Bloom, Lens, and Depth of Field, all of which I will cover in future videos. And below this, we have a Color Correction section. The Procedural option here seems to have no effect, while the Brightness and Gamma controls allow you to adjust the overall game image in a predictable fashion. Note that you can click and drag on these bars to change values dynamically, as shown here. The Shader Parameters panel provides access to customize various effects at a more granular level. Again, I will be taking a closer look at these in upcoming videos, but for now, feel free to poke around and experiment. There are also a few features available in the main ENB panel, which corresponds to the enblocal.ini file. These include the ability to force vertical sync, and setting the number of frames to one here will sync to half of your monitor refresh rate, a customizable frame rate limiter is also provided, as well as an interface that allows you to remap the mod's hotkeys to your liking, with the drop down menus listing all available options. In my next video in this series, we will take a closer look at some of the other effects that are already available, such as the dynamic lens flare effect, which you can see here. I really like how this looks when using shock magic in particular. And we will also look at ENB's depth of field effect, including basic setup and how the effect can be customized to suit your tastes. All right, folks, be sure to stay tuned. And if you're hungry for more ENB videos right now, check out my ongoing series about ENB for Fallout 4. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you next time.